Kate, we're so proud of you in Berkshire. Oh, it must seem a, a million miles away since you're at the Red Roof Theatre near Maidenhead. It doesn't at all, actually. It really doesn't. And, uh, you know, I, I saw my mum and dad and both my sisters and my brother-in-law, actually, just last night. So, you know, and they all still live in, in Berkshire. So, um, so, no, I still feel very, very close to it. Absolutely. And you used to go to the rock festivals, didn't you? To the what? The rock festivals. Yes, we did. And, uh, yeah, we'd go to the rock festivals and we would also go to um, Womad as well. I haven't been to Womad for a while. My sister went last year. I was sad to miss out on that, actually. Yeah, it's moved out of Reading now. I know, I know, I know. It was I know. always by the river. It's moved now. <laughs> and you've got two amazing films out in January. Really amazing. And, and Revolutionary you. Road. You're again with Leonardo DiCaprio, ten years on. Yes, indeed. Actually, you know what? It's nearly 12. <laughs> which makes me feel really old. <laughs> um, but yes, I am teamed together again with Leo on screen and uh, it was just amazing. It really was. I mean, he's the best actor of his generation. I really feel that. And, um, you know, he's just got funnier and nicer and kinder and he's a better actor than he was even back then. And he's even more handsome now than he was back then. And we've remained really close friends. So to be able to use the trust that we've built up over these last 12 years um, was really valuable to us in playing Frank and April Wheeler because, you know, it's, it's, it's a couple who are very much in love, but ultimately end up being extremely cruel through the level of honesty that they have to communicate with each other. So, you know, it was good to know that there were no boundaries with Leo. We could try anything. It was good. And he's Uncle Leo to your children. I mean, they don't. Mm. You, you sort of protect them from the sort of A-list celebrity lifestyle, don't you? So yeah. when they see a picture in the paper of Uncle Leo, it's a yeah. shock. Yes, my daughter actually not very long ago because we don't really have magazines uh, and things in the house. And um, we were in the doctor's surgery, and there was a picture of Leo on the front of a newspaper, and she picked it up and she went, oh, "Oh my God, that is so weird." What is Leo doing on the newspaper? We should really show him this mummy because, you know, that's so amazing. She could not work it out at all. And it was both incredibly sweet and also really quite rewarding for me because, uh, you know, they do still, you know, they do still uh, have that innocence and also understand that my job is something that I do because I love it and not for any of those other reasons that can often come with, you know, being in the public eye. And um, But yes, they do love Leo very much. So yes, they adore him. <laughs> and I know your proudest job is being a mum. Is it difficult juggling that lifestyle, though? Um, I think it's no harder for me than it is for, you know, most working mothers. Um, in fact, in many ways, it's probably easier for me because I can at least travel with my children to work. I mean, when we did The Reader, we filmed in Germany and a little bit of the time I was there on my own with Without them um, but for the most part they were with me and we were in Berlin and Cologne and the Czech Republic and having these wonderful adventures and they're very adaptable and really enjoy travel um, so at least I get to do that and uh, you know there's not a lot of mums who can say that they get to take their children to work with them. Let's talk about The Reader I mean I was blown away with the film it, it stayed oh, with me I mean not only was I crying but mm. I just couldn't talk to anyone afterwards I was deep in contemplation it's mm extremely powerful and you mm. knew that was that a huge onus that this was such a, an important book um yes i mean ab absolutely and i had read the book weirdly because i'm not particularly well read and um and uh, i'm also quite a slow reader and i when i read the novel I sat down and read it in a day, cover to cover, which is, I actually don't think I've done that before or since. Um, it's a completely compelling, captivating story, sort of full of mystery, and it leaves you asking questions um, about that period in history that people will continue to ask. Um, and also morally it challenges you as an audience because you find yourself sympathizing with somebody who was an SS guard. Um, and the moral compromise that that leaves you feeling is not is not comfortable, I think, um, but in a good way. Um, but yes, the fact that I knew it was going to be very emotionally intense and uh, and also that I really could not compare myself to Hannah Schmitz at all. She's a German woman. She works on the trams. She was an SS guard who served briefly in Auschwitz in the war. And I had nothing that I could bring from my own life experience into playing her. And that was terrifying, but it was also part of the challenge because I thought, well, I, this is really a character. I have to really find this, really create this stuff. And um, and it, it, it took a lot and it cost me a lot emotionally too. I was an absolute wreck at the end of And the you shoot. also had to age in this as well yes. and physically mm. wear these bodysuits. Mm, yes, I aged 35 years. Um, and and the, bo the bodysuit part was, um, you know, it's... It, 
that in a way was kind of the the last thing I thought about. You know, it was so much about adopting the um, the energy of an older person, um, helped tremendously, obviously, by that absolutely extraordinary prosthetic makeup and hair that took seven hours to put on, and teeth and eyeballs, literally hands, feet, everything. Um, and the bodysuit was really there just to provide that that gravity. You know, everything starts to go south, doesn't it, as you age? And um, you know, wanted to create a feeling that this was a woman who'd really gone to seed and. And, uh, and it was um, it was a really fascinating process. I've never done anything like that before, and I really loved it. Actually, it was exhausting, but I re I really did love it. I loved looking in the mirror and seeing sixty eight year old me staring right back. You know, it was um, it was it amazing. Was, it's an incredible film. I've just much mentioned about the late Anthony Minghella, um oh. people in the Isle of Wight have obviously taken him to their heart and always will do. Mm. Just a, a word on him. Well, I um, I knew Anthony. Um, but not very well. My husband was extremely close friends with him and uh, all I can tell you is that he was one of the producers of The Reader and um, it was very, very important to him to see this film get made and get made in the right way with Stephen Daldry directing it. And on the day that Anthony died, actually, we were shooting the scenes in the middle of the story around the trial sequence and we were all emotionally wiped out anyway and uh, and I looked at Stephen having just been told that Anthony had passed away and I and I just thought, I don't know how we're going to get through this day. I don't know how we're going to get through this week. And somehow you do, you know, knowing that you're doing it for someone like Anthony, who had just so suddenly passed, um, really made us, I think, all the more committed to really doing a good job and making him proud. And you certainly have. Thank you so much. Thank you.